Welcome back to another Post Media Ottawa Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriock, pleased to be joined by TSN 1200 play-by-play voice of the Senators, Dean Brown. Dean, thanks for joining us today. And as uh, as we speak today, the Senators are turning the calendar to, to December. They start with a series of three games in four days, including a visit by the Vancouver Canucks Wednesday and the Carolina Hurricanes on the road Thursday. Dean, a 110 and one November. Uh, for a myriad of reasons, what do you think has gone wrong here? Uh, everything. Uh, you know, uh, you can look at this and you can pick at little things and line combinations, but the reality is almost nothing has gone well for this team. You know, they've broken down defensively so badly the last little while. Uh, they've had injuries. They had injuries going into the month. Those injuries got worse. Uh, then they went through COVID. Uh, then they went through a stretch where they couldn't get a save from a goaltender and they can't defend. So, you know, they're they're in a situation where, I guess if I guess if you were the eternal optimist, if you're a Sens fan and you're the eternal optimist, you'd have to say they can't have a worse month, which is probably true. Uh, but they right now have a lot of things to fix for sure. Well, let's start, Dean, with the goaltending. I, I had uh, Nick St. Pierre and Wayne Scanlon on here last week, and I talked about the fact that Matt Murray had 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 lost his job as the number one goaltender, and that he was going to have to earn his starts. I didn't anticipate at the time that he was going to have to earn his starts in Belleville. And, and quite frankly, uh, that took me by surprise. What, what do you think of that? I was surprised too, Bruce, just because it, it is so infrequent that, never mind a goaltender, any $6 million player ever goes to the minors. It's just it's not something that happens very often. You, if, you, if you start to think back, I guess, you know, when Wade Redden was with the New York Rangers, he was making 6.4 and they sent him to Hartford. But like literally you you yeah. can, you know, use less than two hands to figure out the number of players yeah. with that size of a contract who've been sent to the minors. But really got to the point, what else was the team supposed to do? I, I know a lot of people have said, you know, it's it's a message sending. Well, no, not really. That That's a side effect, you know. Yeah. It's obviously a message to everybody that, you know, the team is willing to do whatever they have to do. But really, this is a last ditch effort by the franchise to get this guy going. They obviously have a ton invested in this guy and not just monetarily and staying in Ottawa and trying to get starts and giving up bad goals. And, you know, it, it just it wasn't working. So they had to do something. So it's certainly a dramatic and a drastic move. But what else were they supposed to do to try and get the assets to have some value? You know, it. it we talked about this before, you know, that contract is not tradable with the way he's no. playing right now. And so what do you do? You have to make that asset have some valuable value, either recover his game so he can play and win games for at the NHL level or recover your game to the point where you might, might become tradable down the road. Who knows? But um, I think this was, I think the message sending was a byproduct of this. It wasn't yeah. the point of this. The point of this was to get, the asset going again, so the asset would have some value either to this team or to a team you might be able to trade them to. Well, and if you think about it, Dean, and not to spend too much time on Matt Murray, but it's it's a fairly dramatic move uh, to, to send a two-time Stanley Cup champion back to the minors. The The key for me in all of this, Dean, is, is that as long as Matt Murray goes with the right attitude and works on his game, then there's an opportunity to go back uh, for him to come back here and be their top goaltender. Yeah, there's sure. also an, there, there's also an opportunity for him to say, you know, if he if he and uh, he doesn't strike me as this kind of guy, but if 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 he doesn't take this the right way, then this this won't work out well. Well, it won't work out well for the organization, but most yeah. importantly for Matt Murray, it won't work out well for Matt Murray. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you. If he, if he wants to earn that money, which I'm sure he does for him and his family, and he wants to play professional hockey, which you have to think he wants to keep doing, um, it's in his best interest to resurrect his game. So, you know, his attitude has got to be, and initial signs are through his agent, not through Matt, but through his agent, uh, that that is his attitude, which is what you want to see. You want to see a guy who's determined to get his game back in order and determined to get back to the NHL club and determined to be a difference maker once he does that. Um, but at the end of the day, you actually have to do it. And so all the want and all the determination are, are great positive signs, but you actually have to do it now. And that's the most important part of this. Well, let's move on to Philip Gustafson because he becomes a key player in all of this. And Dean, I, I, I know that, that uh, people think that, that Philip Gustafson has, has played well and he has played well for this team. But quite frankly, Dean, if, when, you, when you dig down and look at the numbers, uh, his numbers aren't 
aren't much better than Matt Murray's. It, it, I think he had an 893 save percentage in November. You know, you're not going to win if your save percentage is below 900. We saw that last year. I'm not saying that that Philip Gustafson doesn't compete because he does compete and he competes very hard, but he needs to be better as well. Yeah, for sure. But the one thing I would say, though, Bruce, and sometimes those individual numbers can be a bit deceiving, is that if you look at the quality of saves he's been forced to make to keep his team in the game, um, you know, I think his save percentage in some way is a product of how bad this team has been defensively. And that harms his individual stat. Uh, Because if you watch him play and you watch the the saves that he makes, there's games where he gives up five goals and he's been the best player on the ice for Ottawa. So in some ways, his save percentage has to be a reflection of how this team plays defensively. And if they play better defensively, his save percentage gets better. But suffice it to say, when you look at the three goalies who have played in Ottawa this year, the one thing that there is not a question about stats aside is that he has been the best of the yeah, three. Yeah, so, and I'm, I'm not going to argue with you on that. Yeah, no way. yeah. And, and so yeah. you know, from here on in, and until things change, uh, he is this team's number one goaltender until somebody takes that job away from him. And whether that's Forsberg or Murray comes back and does it, but it's pretty clear the organization has, has said, contract be damned. Whoever the best goalie is, is the best goalie. And that sends, that sends a, a pretty important signal through the rest of the organization. Because if you're a player coming up uh, through this organization, you're saying, well, I'm never going to get a chance. They drafted this guy here and they're paying that guy. I'll never get a chance. Well, the organization has pretty much told everybody, if you're the best player, the contract doesn't matter. You're going to be the best player because I, you... Uh, I didn't see this coming. I thought that they would never waive a six a six million dollar goaltender. I thought that would never happen. Well, they did. So the the message that it does send it goes throughout the organization that they will do whatever they have to do to try and get an asset going. You know, Dean. Uh, it, 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 just to go on to my our, our next topic is not the defense. I mean, the defense has struggled mightily on this team, and this is a really simple question. And I'm not sure there's a simple answer, but why do you think that defensively this team, and, and I just, I do mean with the defensemen, yep. haven't been able to get their act together? Uh, well, because there's been flux within the defensive core, there have been injuries, and let's face it, there's a talent gap. You know, I think we all know that, you know, the defense on this team is going to look substantially different in a year and probably look very different in two years. So, I don't want, I'm not going to demean NHL players by saying they're placeholders, but the reality is that half of the guys who are playing defense for Ottawa right now, in all likelihood, will not be playing defense for Ottawa in a year. You know, when Jake Sanderson gets here, when Jacob Bernard Docker moves up from Belleville, um, you know, when Lassie Thompson becomes a full-time player, you know know what I mean? So I'm just saying that this defense is going to be better in a year. And one of the biggest reasons it's going to be better is they're quite simply going to have better players. So, you know, you can talk about system and the, the, whatever system you're playing, whatever your defensive system is, whatever your defensive zone coverage guidelines are, they're only as good as the people who play them who can execute them. And Ottawa's defense will get better when they get better defensemen. It's just that simple. Well, and it's funny you say that because, you know, you look at the, their defensive system right now and, and, I think a large part of the issue here is that they are haphazard in their own end because guys are trying to do too much. And you know what, you and I know what happens when guys start trying to do too much, Dean. You end up doing nothing because you're running all over the place. And, and people dump on their system and say, well, what's their system? Well, their system isn't for guys to run all over the place, but that to me is what's happening here. And guys are getting themselves in trouble that way. Yeah, for sure. There's no question about that. And, and you're right. You know, you look on social media and even in mainstream media, people say, well, you know, I watch the games. What is their system? Well, there is a system. And but if guys leave yeah. the system to part and freelance yeah. too often, yeah. it's hard for somebody outside to be able to figure out, well, what's he supposed to be doing? Because what that is, that's, you know, well, whatever the play that guy just made to go do that, that ended up being that, that wasn't part of the system. That was him freelancing. And but, you know, that that's one of the byproducts of of having, uh, you know, some players that are scrambling just to try and do something positive. They're trying to make things better and they leave the system to do it. And, you know, I, I understand that things aren't going well. So a guy thinks if I make this individual effort, if it works, what I'm going to try and do, then that's going to be a good thing. The problem is if it doesn't work, then it makes everything else just scattered and, and chaotic. And, and that's what's been happening far too often over, well, the last month of November. Uh, last uh, thing here is, is uh, Adam Gadette 
arrives on waivers from the Vancouver, or pardon me, from the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, he played mostly in wing in Vancouver. A former Holby Baker winner, uh, Dean, he's being brought in because this team needs help at center. And yep. he's going to move back to his natural position at center. Um, has 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 the the loss of Pinto and White been kind of bypassed and in, in all the struggles and and maybe it's playing a bigger role than even you uh, you know you and I think. Um, I think it plays a big role. I've always yeah. thought it plays a yeah. big role simply because at this stage with. You know, Ottawa coming out of the rebuild or still in the rebuild, depending on what your perspective is, and you can have whatever perspective you want. But when you try to move out older players and move in younger players and prospects, one of the um, painful byproducts at this stage is that you don't have a lot of depth um, at certain positions. And for Ottawa, it's at center. So when you lose, as they did, three yep. centers, because remember, Clark Bishop was a guy who was going to be the right. yep. center on this team. So basically, before the season starts, you lose two of them, and then the season just begins, and you lose the third one. Your depth. You who is your depth guy yeah. in case you lose the other two? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, if, 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 in, if in your minor league system, your depth guys are depth guys there, that means they're depth, depth guys at the NHL level. So, you know, I, I don't know how big an impact Adam Godet is going to have because he's going to be a bottom six player on this team. But at least he gives them some depth with experience. And he's young, but he's not old. He's 25 years old. So he's not a young guy, but he's not an old guy. And he's got to be a motivated guy, Bruce. He's got an RFA at the end of this season. Yep. And Ottawa, if they don't want to keep him, all they have to do is not qualify him and just walk away. So he really is going to be playing for a job here or a job somewhere. So you would think he's going to be motivated and if he's not better than what they already have, what did they lose? Nothing. He was a waiver claim. Didn't cost them anything to take him. So it's almost like a free look. And he could solve one of their immediate problems, which is some consistency in that either three or four spot as far as uh, sentiment go. Well, the one thing that does have consistency is the Senator's panel. And uh, we always bring it. We compete every day and we work hard. Listen, thank you for joining us this week. Dean Brown of TSN 1200. We appreciate it for Post Media in Ottawa. I'm Bruce Carriott.